Bro, they're big. They're massive. Are they bigger or what? So does quad size really matter when it comes to being an amazing Olympic weightlifter? Today, we're going to be looking at Danny Spiegel, who probably has the best legs in CrossFit. It's arguable that Danny's legs are even bigger than mine. She's got a back squat of 370 pounds, which is like 170 kilos, a PR clean and jerk of 270 pounds, and a PR snatch of 220 pounds. So does her massive legs make her a better weightlifter? We're gonna take a look at a technique today, which I'm extremely impressed by, to see if it's anything to do with her amazing legs. The lift that I've got here is of one of her snatches. One thing that I loved having watched a fair bit of Danny's lifting is just her discipline in her setup. She takes her time to really get set to the bar, which is super important if you wanna be consistent in the lift. But one thing I was quite surprised to see when I was analyzing her lift was the dynamic start that she does when she initiates the lift. What I mean by dynamic start is as she sets to the bar, you'll see how she kind of yanks at the bar off the floor. And we've spoken about this a little bit before. And whilst this is a technique that a lot of people use, it's very difficult to actually be consistent with this type of technique. Because generally when people go for a dynamic start, especially beginners or people new to Olympic weightlifting, they'll lose shape very, very quickly. However, Danny does not do that. What you'll notice is as Danny kind of rips from the floor, you'll see how she maintains a really consistent angle with her back from the floor. Wouldn't be my preferred way to initiate the lift, but it's great for her to generate a little bit of momentum when she's initiating the lift from the floor. In terms of her setup position, you'll see how her toes are very slightly turned out. This helps with helping the bar track nice and straight in the initial phase from the floor, and also her to keep her shins vertical in this first phase of the lift. As she pulls away, the reason why I tend to opt against using dynamic start is because what you'll notice if you look here specifically at a chest position, you'll see how her shoulders are rounded forward a little bit here and her upper back is also a little bit rounded in this position. This can make it difficult through the middle phase of the lift to lead with the chest, which we're gonna have a look at. She was pulling from the floor, she had quite an aggressive pull. You'll see the upper back in particular will fold like this. For anyone that does struggle to set their back with the snatch, one of the best ways to develop strength in that position is to actually start with the bar at waist height first, set the shoulders back and down. So you can see this movement here, back and down, and actually lower down into the set position. This will help develop strength in this position rather than it folding in the first phase of the pull. So a movement that we could do that would help would actually be doing something like hang snatch below knee. So working from here, lowering to just below the knee and then coming back through the middle into the snatch, that would be one. The other great accessory drill that I'd probably implement would be to do stiff leg deadlifts, working on keeping the shoulders sat back and down as we're going through into this position. Both of these two things would help with that. But one thing you'll notice regardless is that she keeps her eyes looking straight ahead, which is really good. This will help maintain that tension in the mid to upper back. As she progresses to knee height, one thing that you'll notice is that she maintains a really nice flat foot. She's wearing flat shoes for a snatch. I actually like wearing flat shoes sometimes when I'm snatching purely for this basis because it helps keep a nice flat foot as the bar's coming to just above the knee, which is really good. As you'll see, as she transitions into a second phase of her lift, the bar tracks nice and close here to the body, up the quad, which is brilliant. Her shoulders are staying directly over the bar at this phase, and she's in a great position to start driving up from this position. One thing that you'll notice from a technical standpoint is like I said, she had that dynamic start. There is a little bit of weight now in her upper body through this middle phase of the lift. You can see that with a slight bit of bending of the arm and the shoulder sitting forward. A simple tip as the bar's going past the knees, with this happening and that shoulder's leading early, simple thing that I like to think about to help with this is actually just to turn the elbow like so in this phase of the lift here, so the chest is leading. What I'm getting at here is as I'm coming through to this middle phase lift, just very slightly turning that elbow like so through this middle phase will help keep those arms nice and long through the middle here, as opposed to if the elbow is turned in, it'll increase the likelihood of the shoulder popping forward during this extension phase. So that's the key thing that I'd be adding into Danny's training from a technical standpoint and an accessory standpoint. Like I said, one thing for me in this position is had she had set her chest a little bit better at the start and pushed the floor away of her big strong legs, 
then she might have been able to keep the shoulders back and down as she's driving through this middle phase of lift a little bit better. But regardless, you'll see how she's still on flat feet pretty well here right until this bar's at mid thigh and as she's now coming up through into extension. Let's talk about her extension position. Things that I like about this, you'll see that her hips are finishing at this point, just in front of her shoulders. Ensuring that the hips are finishing just in front of the shoulders during extension is great, because it means that the legs are doing the work at this point. We always wanna make sure that the arms are staying straight while the legs are extending. This means that you can maximally use the strength in the legs and the lower body during the lift. If the arms are to bend too early or the bar is to lose contact with the hip too early, you'll end up just relying on momentum generated in the first phase of the lift, as opposed to actually utilizing the leg strength to generate the force that carries over to creating height during the middle phase of the lift. After she's hit extension, you'll see that she stays nice and tall here for a moment and she's doing her best to keep the backs of the hands pointing forward at this point so the trajectory of the bar continues to move straight. If we were to look at what we want the bar to do during this middle phase, if I was to draw a bar path, is that the bar is tracking back very slightly. When we get to hips, it's continuing to stay straight up here and then it loops over like so. By keeping the backs of the hands down during this point and keeping the elbow higher than the hand for as long as possible, this increases the likelihood that during this phase of the lift, the bar continues to track up nice and straight. As the bar's continuing to go up, she's moving down, which is really good to see. And you'll notice how the feet at this point move out. So her feet are always naturally closer in the setup position. That's where you're gonna produce most vertical force. And then the feet move out to allow you to achieve a good receiving position, which she does extremely well. What I love to see during this transitional phase of the lift is that the torso at this point is staying upright. When the torso is staying upright as you're coming down into the receiving position, it stops any issue with the bar crashing on you in the receive position. If the chest drops during this point, so if it was kind of more pointing in this direction as she's moving underneath the bar, the bar is gonna be heading back as her chest drops and this can throw you off balance in the receiving position. But she maintains this nice upright chest position and this is ultimately why I think as she comes into a receive, you'll see how she catches the bounce and stands straight up out the bottom position. This is something that I always teach to my students. If you do the snatch well, when you receive it, it should almost pull you out the bottom position. And maintaining that nice upright chest into the catch position is what is gonna allow you to do this. Chest upright into the receiving position means bang, we're gonna catch that bounce and stand straight up on the same line that that bar's entered in. We'd be seeing that same line going like and then exiting straight here, which you can kind of see happening there. Let's talk a little bit more about receiving position. As she comes into the catch, things that are really good about this is she's got great external rotation here of the shoulder and elbow. You'll see how the wrist is sitting back very nicely here in this receiving position, which is why we see such a solid lockout for her, and absolutely no wavering in the arms. Because she's got such strong, strong legs, you'll notice as she stands up, she keeps the knees pinned in this position. So you'll see how they stay out over the toe. If the knees stay over the toe in this point, it makes it much easier for you to utilize the quads to stand up out the hole, which in turn also keeps the chest upright, which will reduce the likelihood of you missing the lift as you're standing up out the hole. In addition to this, the more upright we can keep the chest as we stand out, allows us to maintain this great external rotation still as we're standing up, which will relieve pressure on the shoulders, which is what we wanna do. We wanna let the lower body do the work as much as possible in the snatch movement. Overall, I'd say this is an absolute incredible example of amazing technique, especially in the CrossFit scene by Danny, and probably one of the reasons why she's so consistent in and around that 95, uh, 220 pound snatch mark. In my opinion, if there was a couple of things that I was to give Danny that would help her kind of take that mark to snatching in excess of 225, which I think she's capable of, based on her strength numbers. It would just be to build a little bit better discipline in this first phase of the off the floor, which would allow her to lead with the chest a little bit better through this middle phase of the lift, which I think would ultimately give her a little bit more height through this middle phase into the receiving position. 
and ultimately make the whole lift a little bit more efficient. So in answer to the question, does big legs help you in Olympic weightlifting? No, but strong legs do. And that's something that Danny has in abundance. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you do like, share and subscribe. And if you want me to do a technique analysis of any other lifters, then don't be afraid to put that in the comments.